How are you doing today, Nathan? So good. How's it going? Man, listen to that voice. I mean, we get to hear you sing, but to hear you speak, oh my God. Oh, man, I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. How are you feeling? I'm feeling absolutely fantastic, and I hope you are too. Yes, sir. Doing great. I can't complain. The journey you're on, the seed has been popped. You're now going to become fruit for a future audience. What is that journey like? Oh, man, it's unreal. It's unreal. I have to uh, I have to remind myself every day that I'm, I'm not dreaming. You know what I mean? How do you do with that? Because I, I do a defrag journal every day where I ask the questions and question the answers because I've got to stay grounded and I've got to stay mindful of the presence of now. Ooh, that's a good question. Honestly, I'd probably have to credit my lady. Uh, she keeps my feet firmly planted on the ground. I can, t- I can tell you that she can. She she reminds me um the the beautiful things are just about everyday life. The stuff that's not extraordinary. I consider my time on the voice extraordinary. Um, but she's such a beautiful um, she's such a beautiful way to keep me grounded and help me realize the day-to-day things that I just don't want to take for granted. You know, when you get that close to somebody else, and, and you know, especially when you're on The Voice or you're on that stage, there have been many times that I like have been on these huge stages with people around, and when I lock eyes onto my wife, it's like you go into mm. a deeper part of that journey because, because they know you, they know how to build you yep. back up again, to hold you, to embrace you. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. How do we share that with people that are always questioning their love? Ooh, that is a really good question. There, I feel like there's a song in there somewhere. <laughs> <I> really, <laughs> <laughs> because in reality, that's what I love about talking with older people, those that have been married for 35, 50 years, because they've got mm-hmm. a story. They made it. They're doing it. How, how did right. they do it? Share the story. You know what? That's actually a, a wild, uh, it's wild you say that. So my girlfriend and I have a duo show. We work on ships. Um, and one question we ask, we do a we do a bit where we ask for the oldest or the longest married couple. We have the audience members raise their hands and we find the couple that's been married for the longest. And during the song, we give them a bottle of Prosecco. Oh. And at the, at the end of that, uh, always goes over really well, which makes us happy. But at the end of that, we ask them for their advice. We say, do you have any tips for love and marriage? And honestly, we've heard some wild advice. Um, I think one person was like, don't die. <laughs> they were married for like 60 something years. I was like, OK, all right. Um, that's, it's just interesting. You should say that. Well, the, I, I, I knew that during the lockdown that I had married the right person because I, to this day, even long after the lockdown, I can't get enough of her. I, I just, I hurt when she has to go do something away from the house. It's like, no, no. And it's not that I'm codependent. <laughs> I just want to be with her. Yeah. How long have you guys been together? 32 years. Oh, wow. Okay. So oh, I got to ask you now, do you have any tips or advice? Be friends first. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, it, I, I fell into the same boat with, with my wife, Um, you know, uh, looking at my creativity, and she understood it. She goes, just do me a favor. Don't give me any of your DJ ego crap, because I know people more famous than you. Ooh, wow. <laughs> That'll keep you grounded. <laughs> That'll keep you grounded. <laughs> now, you performing um, on those cruise ships, I mean, you've got a fresh new audience. Well, how many times? Three times a day? Oh, no, no. We, um... Uh, Emily and I, when we go out, we do, uh, we do one show one day, and then we'll maybe have like three or four days um, to tend to other non-performative business. Good. Um, and then we'll probably we'll maybe you know we'll maybe do like two days in a week of actual showtime performance. Wow, what is it about the musicians of Chicago? Because, I mean, there's just, some, is it the blues? Is it the soul of the nation? Because, I mean, there's so many musicians come from Chicago. Yeah, you know what? I, I honestly think it might be the pizza. <laughs> I think that's... <laughs> are we talking pizza or are we talking a pie here? Which one is it now? Come on, we're talking Chicago here. <laughs> that's, <laughs> so my girlfriend always says, she's like, ah, it's a lasagna. Um, honestly, I think I think um, there's, there's something to be said about it. Maybe it is the blues. Um, all of the people that are closest to me from Chicago that make music, they derive a lot of their music. And the, I guess the same style that blues was derived in out of that sense of like pain and turning hardship into beauty of expression. So I think um, 
that probably does resonate with a lot of my my close friends from Chicago. I, I hadn't really thought about it. That's a wonderful question. Which city has the worst traffic, Chicago or Nashville? Oh, easy. Oh, between the two, <laughs> yeah. uh, Chicago. Oh, really? yeah. The eyes Unless you get to Broadway, yeah. Oh, so you know, man. You know. <laughs> it's, sometimes it's crazy. My wife is from Berwyn, so we we visited uh, Chicago oh. so many times. Okay. Okay. Where and where are you from originally? Billings. Mon- well, I grew. I was born in Sheridan, Wyoming, but I grew up in Billings, Montana. Okay. Those are two places I have not been to yet. You've and got I really to. Want to go. You've got to because especially, you know, the, there was an astronaut that said that when you walk at night in the state of Wyoming, that's what it feels like to be on the moon. But in, in Montana, oh, wow. when they say it's the big sky country, I'm telling you, there is nothing bigger you will ever experience than that sky. Wow. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to make my way out there. Uh, you won't go back. You won't go back. <laughs> <laughs> My, uh, I, I have a friend who just uh, went on tour out through Montana and they were talking about um, just some of the hills um, and some of the like, I, I guess, leading up to that, yeah. leading up to getting into Montana or, you know, wherever they where, wherever they were. But that's definitely on my bucket list. Montana, for sure. Yeah, it looks like this is the way that I best explain Montana. It's like it's like God took Montana, folded it in half and everything in the eastern side is in valleys. Everything that's on the western side are all mountains. And so you go oh, you oh, go wow. from the badlands of Montana to the bad mountains. I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> OK, OK. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to when I when I do go. I'm going to make sure I find you to let you know what I thought of that big sky. <laughs> what are you learning on being on season 25? Because, I mean, look, look at your coach, John Legend. I would love to have 30 seconds with that man. Oof. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm learning a lot. I will say I'm learning a lot. And it's oftentimes from just the content, if we're working on a song, and it's, hey, try this, or nah, let's do this, harmony, that kind of thing. But it's also watching the way that he moves. Mm-hmm. I think that yeah and his his confidence and it's just uh his confidence in himself but then also him sharing that confidence in you you know saying hey, all right i want you to go through the next round that in and of itself has helped me learn to trust my instrument a little bit more in some ways body language is everything isn't it yeah 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 it really is i and I, i'm learning that like watching myself back on TV, you can see my, you know, I can see my body language. I can see the way I'm talking to people. And I, I it's hard not to be like, Oh, do I really sound like mm-hmm. that? No, I, I really look like that. Is that how I stand? I was like, okay. All right. Strange. Well, I've always believed that the reason why people, you know, are, are you find it so different to hear their voices is because our mm-hmm. ears are behind our voice. We're like backstage. Wah, 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 wah. You know, and, and so when we when so when the voice mm-hmm. is coming back at us and our ears are hearing it first, it's a completely different vibration. Interesting. Okay, you're putting me on game right now. I appreciate that. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> I did not. That makes sense, though. <laughs> Even as I'm talking now, I'm noticing that. That's wild. Huh. He's got a great. He's got a great sense of like. Um, yeah, he's just got a great sense of confidence that I think kind of like bleeds into the stuff that I end up doing. Well, I've I've always believed that this generation is blessed with what Marvin Gaye must have been like when it comes to meeting and greeting new performers because Marvin was was an ambassador to Motown and and so many people just came from that entire movement and I think John Legend is the same way. Oh, yeah, that's actually a good way of looking at it. Um and I I oh, man, I've I've you know, I've been a fan of John Legend since 5th, you know, 5th 6th grade and it's it's a it's a beautiful thing to see him collaborate with other artists, especially in the, you know, the soul world. Um, that, yeah, I guess I guess yeah, he is he is that sort of I guess this generation's ambassador in a similar way. Wow. Learning how to project your voice inside that arena for NBC's The Voice because I I can't imagine the echo that must be in there because I would love to play with that reverb. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Um, when I was on stage, um, it's there is a lot of sound, and that's a beautiful thing. And sometimes, me navigating the sound just because I've never heard sound quite that good and that, like, to that extent in the in the way that it's just I guess formed based on the acoustics in the room. Um, it, it was a little like uh, jarring at first. I was like, oh man, okay, okay. Um, but it, it also, you know. 
it, it, it it's a good learning curve you know it's it's also good to sing in a space that you know has been um treated for sound in mm -hmm. so many ways so very grateful for that i mean 25 years there's got to be some ghosts inside that place um, right <laughs> right <laughs> Oh man, there has to be there. There, there's some spooky stories about the hotels that they, they <laughs> that we stay at, and um, so I, I don't go out too much when I'm in the hotels. Um, try to stay in my room where it's safe. The weather has got to be a factor for your voice as well, because coming from Nashville, where it's been kind of a dry kind of winter, and then you're going to California, where where it's it's lots of water. That's got to play hell on your voice. I've been lucky. Um, the heat or the the moisture or you know um it hasn't affected me in that way thankfully not yet knock on wood um <laughs> uh, even here in nashville like I, I feel i feel all right but we did have a couple people that um had serious um vocal issues and i think it was due to the probably uh, attributed to the climate um some people you know people are coming from all over the place and like you said that california uh climate is such a specific kind of climate and it can really mess with people's vocals i luckily i i didn't have that problem but probably because i mostly stayed in my room away from the ghosts yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> you know it, it reminds me of when i was in the studio my last project and you know the people go oh you do car commercials and i impersonated a car commercial and what happened is i killed my vocal cords but i still had to pay for oh. that studio oh my god i was so upset with myself because i didn't get any studio time at all Oh man, and you know what? I had, that's that's ah oh, that's such a tough thing. I like in in traveling and like working around and doing different gigs. It's just a different type of job in the sense that, and you can relate to this. It's like your voice is you know that is the the money maker. Yep. That's what's yep. that's you know if you lose that, and some people are you know they they will never understand just how vital it is to have that when it it means you know your next paycheck. So. Oh, man, dude, I'm sorry about that. that, that and that's tough. Well, I mean, I can't even go see the Carolina Panthers play. I can't go to a live performance because I'll get too involved, you know, because you go to, you go see your favorite band. You're going to be singing at the top of your lungs. Right, 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 right. Yep, yep. Oh, man, that's a sacrifice, too, because that's an experience, like, to, to be able to blow your voice out and know, ah, it's fine, I just won't speak for a couple of days. <laughs> so how do you prepare for life beyond NBC's The Voice? Sure, it is a great platform right now, but 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 yep. life beyond. Because one of my favorite things to do is to repost, repost, repost these conversations. Because I believe that people every day are finding new people. Oh, wow. Well, well God bless you. I really do appreciate that. Um, one, I just want to appreciate that, that kind of, um, just that passing along energy. I really do appreciate that. Um, to answer your question, I feel personally like um, my my pursuit is in uh, my my main goal is in the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, and I think in order to achieve that, I have to be able to provide for my family. And so far, cruise ships have given me an avenue <clears throat> to expand and create. Um, I've created uh, shows with my girlfriend. I've created solo shows for myself. Um, I've created a duo show of guys, um, actually contestants from the show. Wow. We, we've collaborated. Yeah. So I'm really, you know, it's, it's given me, a, um, it, well, I will say the voice has given me a platform and a base to draw people into some of the projects I'm creating and the acts that I'm building. And, um, I'm really optimistic that, you know, once things start get rolling out, um, it'll be a opportunity to incorporate. Uh, being a link between people that are on these shows and don't quite know what to do afterward. Mm -hmm. I'd love to draw them in and create shows with them that they're comfortable in so that they can then go share their talents around the world like I've been lucky enough to do. So you're Marvin Gaye then. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's the biggest compliment I've heard all day. I don't, I don't quite accept it, but I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, I love the way that that you, that you really do believe in the spirit of of sharing. It, it, it's you know we all take, but but you've got to give back, and your music is giving back. Oh wow, I, I I appreciate that, and I also agree with you. I think, and that's something that John John does so well. I remember asking him. Um, I asked him. I was like, so how do you? Where do you pull from? Uh, you're singing some of the same songs all the time around the world, and you know, how do you keep it fresh? How do you keep it exciting? How do you keep it new? How do you share something with people 
that may feel rigid or stale to you? How can you connect those dots and like be a bridge to a message and a feeling that changes people's lives, even if you're doing the same thing so many times? And he was like, honestly, um, sometimes I pull it in the moment. If I'm singing a song, I can see somebody and look at their eyes and connect with them and whatever they give me, then I can use that to kind of fuel the newness and the excitement that can get a message across. And I just thought it was a beautiful way to put like, how to share energy and how to receive and try to give energy and genuinely connect with people that you know you're performing for and that and are enjoying the music with it it was yeah very insightful on his part yes one one of the exercises that i do and i have to tell myself when i'm out there in the public is is that you know cuz i asked myself in writing the the question are people happy to see you and i said no i said mm. they're happy that i see them and and, and 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 that's the thing that oh, i love wow. is i recognize them that's what makes them happy Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Oh, that is beautiful. I'm so glad you said that. I really, yeah, I love that. I absolutely love that. When did you know that your journey was going to do what it's doing? Or is it, or are you still sitting back going, okay, let's, let's follow through here. I'm going to take some notes and uh, there's, cause there's always a bigger picture somewhere. Yeah. 100%. 100%. I've always wanted to perform and to take it to a level like this. I auditioned for The Voice when I was 14 and I didn't quite get through. So I, it's always been in me. I just have that, I, I feel free on stage and I feel um, I, I, all of the worries of the world don't exist for me, which is a very awesome feeling. Um, but I I, I realized, um, and this is gonna sound wildly crazy, I, but I realized when I was younger, I was about 2021 20, and my best friend he went to such a prestigious college and i i went to essentially a community college that graduated into becoming a university um but he really wanted to uh, perform with me and work together and learn uh in a collegiate setting yeah so he, he he talked his teachers for me and he was like yeah man come on down here and audition which i thought was just very selfless of him and i really appreciated it so i went down and i did the audition and I'm, i wasn't really familiar with acting at the time so i remember them t- them telling him because he was in such close contact with them that uh they didn't really they weren't crazy about my acting but they gave they really rated me high for vocals and he re- relayed that to me and from that um i was i started feeling confident and i remember this is probably the worst decision i've made in my life but i remember i talked to them in an interview and they were questioning me they said so why do you think that you should come to our university? What do you hope to learn? What do, what do you like? They basically presented, you know, why do you want to be here? Yeah. And I wish I hadn't have said this, but in the time I said, um, I really think you guys can teach me a lot. And I'm, I know that you're a great university with great staff and I'm here to learn from the best. However, if I'm not accepted into this university, I'm still going to get exactly where I'm going. And as a 20 year old looking back in my head i'm like ooh that probably wasn't they, this is probably a reason why they didn't accept you you know um so it, i'm a far ways from that but i do think that innate that there's been something innate in me whether it's singing in the shower or singing on the voice i think there's been something inside of me that has always yep. wanted to perform in some way wow where can people go to give you lots of love there mr nathan Um, love is well received on Instagram. So that's at Nathan underscore Chester with two R's or Facebook, which is just Nathan Chester or TikTok, which again is Nathan underscore Chester with two R's. I love it. You got to come back to the show anytime in the future, dude. Oh man, Arrow, it was such a nice time talking to you and, and, and getting to know you. I really would love to come back. Absolutely. Be brilliant today. Okay. Yes, sir. Will do. Thank you.